if um, Mick had to choose between music, women, or money, what would he choose? Uh, I think the love of the blues is still strong enough. He'd be hesitating between uh, music and money. Anyway, the two are indivisible. For him now. Um, well, has this always been the case? No, the stones at the beginning were quite um, idealistic. Um, they were a bit socialist. Nick went to the radical London School of Economics. Um, and they, they felt their mission was to bring the blues to a wider audience. That's what they wanted to do. Um, and it wasn't until really after they were taken over by Andrew Oldham, their first manager, that they began to see uh, the possibilities of making money, particularly through songwriting, Mick and Keith songwriting. Um, but they weren't in control of their money. Mick, uh, even Mick, the hard-headed, astute Mick, was not really in control of the finances for most of the 60s, not till the very end of the 60s when they decided to get rid of Alan Klein, who had seemed to be making so much money for them, getting advances for record companies. Um, once they ditched Alan Klein, then the big earning years began. But then Mick found out that he didn't own, they didn't own the copyright to his and Keith's uh, songs up until 1971. So what was the, actually the first songs, the first album that they did earn their money from? It was after they went to Atlantic and uh, Armadotigan and Sticky Fingers. So that's, that's when they actually started, started to make big money. Well, and yeah, and, the tour, and then the tours in the 80s. The, there was a big tour at the beginning of the 1980s, 1982, which was their 25th anniversary or 20th, 20th anniversary. Um, and everyone said, how can they have lasted 20 years? It's amazing. Um, but in fact, uh, that was the first tour with a lot of sp commercial sponsorship. Um, but they didn't really start making money because then there was a big row within the band that went on through the 80s uh, till the end of the 80s. So it was really the 90s they started making the huge amounts of money on tours. Okay. Um, well, we can't discuss the whole book you've, you've written, so I'd like to pick out certain elements. Um, we'll first start out with uh, well, the music part. Um, new single, Doom and Gloom. What do you think of it? It sounds like the Stones, what can I say? Um, you know, they haven't really sort of developed very much. Um, that sort of sound was around from the end of the 60s. Um, and they sound like the Stones, that's what people want. Is, is it a good song? Is the song a good song? Well, it's a Stones song. You know, they do. They always keep to a certain standard, and it's like sort of merchandise, really. Um, they, they like this sort of the Holiday Inn chain in America. There's always something you can rely on. Yeah, but I think if you listen back to well, the singles they've released the last ten years or so, I think this is a pretty good single. I think it's a good single. I'm not saying it's not a good single. Yeah. Um, it just has come from a conveyor belt, really. But how far can that sound develop? You know, it's Mick and Keith, um, and the rhythm section doesn't really matter that much. Okay. Um, do you think there will be a new album? I can't see that there wouldn't be because that's a way of, you know, maximizing this opportunity. This is not very many live appearances compared to the huge tours that used to last a year or even two years or sometimes be split and go over longer than two years. So they want to get as much as they can and probably a film as well. So you actually think there will be a new album? I would have thought there would be, yes, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the Doom and Gloom single, if we uh, analyse the lyrics and the music, what, what can you say, what's typical of the Stones for you? Uh, typical of the Stones, well, the voice, the lead voice, isn't really like a lead voice. It's just part of the instrumentation. Um, this is not like a distinctive vocalist way up ahead of his musicians. This is all. This is a sound where the voice is blended with the instruments, because that voice has not been like the voice of a human being for the last forty years. Um, it doesn't come from. It used to come vaguely from the American South. Now it comes from some planet, in an unknown galaxy. Um, it's such a parody of Americanness. The closest parallel to me is the, uh, the Tom and Jerry cartoons when Tom the cat used to be chased by a woman with a, 
a broom and she'd be screaming at him and that's what Jagger's voice sounds like to me but I'm not decrying it you know they have made great popular music and that voice is integral to that sound <laughs>